Okay, so we're going to start building the uh, subunit of the coral reef um, by repeating some of these forms on the surface of a polysphere. And to do this, we're going to use the insert mesh brush. So let's take a look at the insert mesh brush because there's a few rules that you have to follow in order for it to work correctly. Um, let's take a look at, say, coral reef A. If you recall, um, when I was sculpting this model, I subdivided it once so that I could add enough geometry to put this little dimple in. So if I go in the tool palette and I scroll down to geometry, my little magnifying glass here, you'll see that um, in the geometry palette, I have two subdivision levels. So if I move this down, we go to subdivision level one. If I move it up, subdivision level two. Uh, I need to remove the subdivision level so I can start using the insert mesh brush. So I'm actually going to press the delete lower button and this gets rid of any lower subdivision lo uh, levels. So the model is pretty much frozen like this at the moment. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the uh, brush palette and I'm going to press the I key while the brush palette is open. So let's take a look at some of these brushes here. Uh, when you press the I key, it reveals all the brushes that start with the letter I. So you can see we have a bunch of brushes here called IMM Clod, IMM Clothing, IMM Curve, etc. IMM stands for Insert Multi Mesh, or just think of it as Insert Mesh for the moment. So let's take a look at IMM Body Parts. If I select this brush, and let me remove my magnifying glass, and I start drawing on this surface, I start inserting uh, little human heads all over the surface of my model. So that's the idea behind the insert mesh brush. You're kind of adding geometry to the existing model as part of the same mesh. Um, it's a little odd, uh, especially because you end up with things like this. Um, you'll also notice that as I draw each head on the model, everything else becomes dark gray, indicating that it's masked. What this means is that, you know, the most recent model that I drew is unmasked and everything else is. So now I can take advantage of things like the transpose tool to reposition uh, these models if I need to. But uh, I don't want to insert little heads on this thing. Um, so I'm going to press Control Z a few times to undo and get back to this state. What I'm going to do first is we take a look at our reference. You can see that within each one of these little dimples, there's just a little uh, tip of like a polyp or something peeking out. So I'm going to add a few of those details using the insert sphere brush. So I'm going to open up the brush palette, press I and find insert sphere. And it's this one right here. And all it does is just like the name implies is it adds a little sphere into the mesh. So I'm just going to stick a few of these in here, kind of small. And then I'm going to unmask everything by holding the control key and dragging out a blank part of the canvas and that removes the mask. So let's do that again with uh, some of these others. So I'll go down to this one. I'll add a little sphere. Control drag. To remove the mask. This model has multiple levels of subdivision. So if I try and draw a sphere, you get a little message that says that the mesh is composed of multiple subdivision levels. Delete or freeze the subdivision levels and try again. So I'm going to go down to geometry and let's just delete lower levels of subdivision and we can now draw our sphere. Control drag to clear the mask. So with this one, which is Coral Branch B, I'm going to delete lower levels of subdivision, draw my little spheres in here. And control drag to clear. So the insert sphere brush is a very good example of a, a simple uh, insert mesh brush. It's probably the simplest, as simple as you can get. Um, but the other ones in here are, are much more complex. For instance, the IMM body parts or B parts brush, if we click on that, I'm going to 
hover over this and then hold the M key. When I hold the M key, what you'll see is that this brush is not just a head, it's actually a collection of other meshes. We have a female head, a male head, a leg, an arm. So if I switch to the arm by clicking on it and then drag on this, I have an arm. Uh, press Control Z to undo that. If you take a look at some of the other ones, they get really, really complex. In fact, there's an entire train set hidden within the uh, brush palette here. Um, so if I hit the I key to switch to insert mesh brushes and click on the IMM train brush, switch to that brush, I'm going to hover over this and press the M key. And you can see that these are all the different parts that are within the IMM uh, train brush. In fact, they have, you know, tankers, an engine, uh, pieces of track, doors, pipes, etc. Everything you need to build your own train set within ZBrush without having to actually model anything from scratch. So how does something like this come to be? Well, it's very easy to make your own insert mesh brushes. So what we're going to do is we're going to make a brush kind of like this, but instead of train parts, it's going to have uh, parts of uh, our coral. So to create an insert mesh brush, what you need to do is orient your uh, current model in the viewport so that you're looking at it straight down or the way that you want it to be inserted into another mesh. So um, in, in other words, when I use this brush, the coral arm is gonna stretch out towards the camera in exactly this direction based on the normal of the mesh. A little bit easier to demonstrate than it is to um, describe. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go into the brush palette and choose brush create insert mesh So let me bring up the uh, magnifying glass here. So create insert mesh is what I want And when I click on that, I'm going to get a warning that's going to ask me Do I want to create a new brush or do I want to append this to the existing brush? If I choose append then this brush is going to automatically become part of the train insert train brush, which is not what I want. I want a new brush. So I'm going to press the new button. And then we have a brush here. And let me get rid of the magnifying glass here. But you can see if I drag on this, now we're getting corals. So you can see that this has some really powerful applications to it. So um, I've got my coral branch A now as part of the brush. I just hit undo a few times to get rid of them. So let's go to coral, band, coral branch B. I'm gonna control drag on the canvas, make sure there's no mask applied. Orient the canvas so that I'm looking at it straight on. And then I'm gonna choose brush, uh, create insert mesh. But this time, since I have my coral brush loaded, I'm gonna choose append. And it's gonna give me a message just telling me that when I need to switch between uh, coral branches, I just need to or use the M key, which I already know. So I'm going to hit OK. So in other words, if I hover over this and press M, now I can choose between Coral Branch A or Coral Branch B. So I'm going to go to Coral Branch C now. Make sure there are no masks applied. Orient the brush and choose Brush, Create Insert Mesh, and I'm going to choose Append. Press OK, and now I have, if I hover over this and hold the M key, A, B, and C. Okay, so now I'm going to switch to Coral Branch D. This is the little, just a little individual polyp that I made earlier. Orient that, um, orient the canvas, so I'm looking straight down on the polyp. Choose Brush, Create Insert Mesh, and hit Append. Now if I hover over this and hold the M key, I've got four different coral models to choose from. The next thing I need to do is I actually need to save this brush um, so that I can uh, load it into future ZBrush sessions and use it whenever I need to model a coral reef. And also because if ZBrush crashes right now, I will lose my brush and I'll have to remake it from the beginning, which is a little bit tedious. So I'm gonna to go to brush, save as, and we'll call this uh, the coral brush. And uh, it's going to save it in the ZBP format. That's a special brush format. So I'm going to choose Save. Anytime I'm in another ZBrush session and I need to use that brush, I can just go to Brush, Load Brush, find that ZBP file on my hard drive and load it in. 
and then I can use that brush. So that's a very convenient way to work.